Hello, I'm Brett Boggs, Superintendent of Schools for the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation. On Thursday, September 12th, the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation began a two-day process of honoring our fourth class of Tippecanoe Valley High School Distinguished Alumni. Distinguished alumni are Valley graduates, living or deceased, who have led successful lives while making substantial contributions to their chosen field of work or have provided outstanding service to their community, state, or country. The class of 2013 consists of seven Valley graduates from the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s. The seven inductees into the class of 2013 were honored with a formal dinner held at Tippecanoe Valley Middle School. Following the dinner, the inductees were introduced and interviewed by local radio personality, Rita Price. Each inductee also introduced and spoke about a Tippecanoe Valley educator or educators that had a significant impact on their life. Induction Day activities followed on Friday, September 13th at Tippecanoe Valley High School. The day opened with a welcome breakfast at which the inductees were introduced to the two student liaisons that would accompany them throughout the day. Each inductee then made four presentations to groups of freshmen through seniors in which they shared their high school, career, and life experiences. This proved to be a beneficial time for the students of Tippecanoe Valley High School as they learned about the outstanding accomplishments of these distinguished individuals. The students realized earning a diploma from Tippecanoe Valley High School through hard work and taking advantage of the many opportunities available to them was an important initial step in the successful life of each individual. The inductees were then given a tour of the school, followed by lunch, where the inductees were available to speak with individual students and small groups of students. Following lunch, the inductees participated in the individual interviews, which you are about to enjoy. Induction Day concluded when the inductees into the Tippecanoe Valley High School Distinguished Alumni Class of 2013 were introduced at halftime of the home football game. A brief biography was read aloud as each inductee was presented a beautiful commemorative plaque. Nominations are being accepted for the Tippecanoe Valley High School Distinguished Alumni Class of 2014. Anyone who would like to submit a nomination may obtain a nomination form from any Tippecanoe Valley School, the Administration Office, or the Tippecanoe Valley website at tvsc.k12.in.us. Finally, I would like to thank RTC's D. Brown for recording the interviews with our distinguished alumni. The Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation appreciates our strong partnership with the Rochester Telephone Company and the support RTC provides our schools and community. Now it's time to meet the members of the Tippecanoe Valley High School Distinguished Alumni Class of 2013. I'm Marilyn King Kindig Stahl and I graduated from Valley in 1983. Uh, Charles Howard, go by Chuck. Uh, graduated in 1988. I'm Brandon Miller and I graduated in 1992. I'm Ron Newland, uh, Tippecanoe Valley class of 1976. Uh, I'm Cameron Van Lanningham and I graduated in 1998. My name is uh, Kenya Rosas. I uh, used to be Ramirez in high school and I graduated in 2000. Orville Haney, class of 1998. Lots of memorable moments, of course, but um, I think the one that stands out in my mind, believe it or not, is the sit-in strike. We actually had a sit-in strike, and they were sitting in because they didn't like the principal, and they didn't like what he was doing, and they wanted to tell the superintendent, and everybody was here. And so a lot of kids went and sat in uh, the cafeteria area that it is now and refused to go to class until something was done about the principal. So even back then, uh, people were really into their school. 
Um, my most memorable moment was uh, my junior year when I was participating in a play. It was called Terror in the Suburbs. And I let some friends talk me into uh, having a small role in a play. I spent most of the uh, time in a box. So. Uh, my most memorable moment actually is senior skip day. Uh, it wasn't a real skip day because it had been planned by the administration that we'd have a day off and a group of 12 of us went golfing and at the end we took a picture and when I got home I realized that it was the exact same 12 people uh, that attended my first grade birthday party. I think that's the hardest of all these questions. There's a there's a poster out, uh, out there about you don't remember days, you remember moments, but for me, I can't, my, my memories largely have to do with, I, I can't place them in a, even a particular year. It's, the, it's just the, uh, you know, the, the great um, opportunity and, and, and atmosphere of, of, uh, of friendship and fellowship with, you know, with friends in and around and before and after class. I guess as I thought about it, I, the opportunity to speak at graduation and to give an address, a salutatorian's address, that was really a heartfelt thank you to my classmates and teachers and, and, um, uh, and the community for the fact that I came here as a sophomore with the full intention of uh, reinventing myself and had the opportunity in, in this community to do that. Well, I'm going to veer off into my little cheese ball moment here, but when I was a senior in high school, I sprained my ankle very severely and uh, was on crutches for a while. And uh, I had this uh, wonderful girl who was a nurse and took care of me. And uh, she took such good care of me that I married her. And she's got two, <laughs> we've got two kids now. So that's my most memorable thing from high school. Well, I actually have several, but there are a couple that kind of stick out. Um, one's kind of gloomy, so I'll start with the happier one. Um, Senior, uh, senior week, uh, homecoming week at my senior year, it just it hit me sometime during that week that that was probably going to be the last, you know, we're getting close to graduation and there weren't going to be very many more moments like that with the friends that I had developed all through school. So that really hit me. And then, um, I don't remember if it was freshman or sophomore year, but it was early in my high school career. Uh, we came into school and to the news that one of our teachers had passed away here, just outside the high school pretty much. And it really shocked me because it really affected the whole school. And even though I didn't have that teacher, I felt like I had known him just because of how everyone was talking about him. And it just brought into perspective how close this school is and how everyone is so open and welcome to each other. Yep, my my fondest memories are the days spent with my friends and uh, classmates and, and uh, having fun with them. But at the one moment that stands out as one of the more uh, exciting and best times of my life was when we got the opportunity to play in the Hoosier Dome uh, for the TRC Day at the Dome. And uh, I got to be a team captain and we went down there to Indianapolis and we played Big Oak Hill and they had a quarterback that was just spectacular and everybody was talking about how bad they are going to whip Valley. And uh, I got to call the opening toss and we deferred, kicked off to them. And on the first series, uh, we got in on their quarterback and, and I got him by the shoelaces and our outside linebacker came in while he was stretched out and I think he popped a couple of his ribs and he was done. And uh, we ended up winning 35 to nothing. And that was a big highlight. Um, the, the teachers that we had at the time, um, this was a transition in the 80s where we were going through and learning about computers and getting into a lot of electronics. So we had some uh, teachers that were real interested in the new technologies and they inspired that in the students. I think I enjoyed the opportunity to do a lot of different things. Uh, my wife went to North Central, which is a huge high school uh, in Indianapolis. And this school just gave me a, an opportunity to do everything at least once. Well, I think it, it was that, that camaraderie of the opportunity to, um, um, you know, we'd plan surprise birthday parties for, you know, for teachers and sneak, uh, sneak cake and, 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 uh, and punch into, into the class. And, and uh, there, was a, it was, there was a great, a, a great sense of uh, enjoying being there 
both for, with for both friends, other students, and faculty who were friends. Uh, well, I enjoyed uh, having uh, many very good friends that I had made uh, in elementary school, and then meeting uh, the new people uh, from uh, uh, Akron. At that time, I was telling uh, the girls there that uh, the middle school didn't exist when I was uh, uh, a student in middle school, and uh, we all came together that year and. Guys like Orv and other people in, uh, in, uh, from Akron, we all met and became very close. I uh, got to enjoy a lot of different opportunities with uh, lots of people. All the opportunities, um, you know, my family came from Mexico, so high school was very different back there. So I didn't grow up knowing someone that had been through high school, um, played the sports or involved in other activities. So everything was very new to me, um, to my family. So really just taking advantage of participating in some of those things and learning new things. I decided to be a nurse and because Fort Wayne, Indiana was close and I thought that would be a great place to go and not too far from home I went to Parkview Nursing School and after I was there and graduated from being a nurse I worked on my bachelor's degree then at Indiana University part of IPFW. Um, after Tippecanoe Valley I had uh, joined the US Navy and then after that I went on to do some college work. After graduation I figured out I didn't want to play golf so I went looking for a school uh, that would provide me an opportunity to get into med school one day and uh, Manchester College was ranked number one in the state for biochem. They offered me the presidential scholarship was, uh, which at the time was free tuition and free room and board, uh, so I went there. Um, then after I uh, was a biochem major through the first semester of my junior year, I switched and finished with a pre-law degree. I um, was awarded a, an academic scholarship to go to Ball State University. I will say when I was an undergraduate, I was uh, the first from my family to go to college, and so I started looking at college thinking, not knowing what to expect or how to go about it, understanding that state universities were more affordable, and so that's really all I applied to. I didn't realize at the time, I didn't know at the time, that the private universities, while they have a higher price tag, often offer a wider range of financial aid. And that's really one of the pieces of advice I give to young students today. After graduating, I went on to uh, Purdue University. I have a large amount of my family that went there, and so I uh, continued that tradition. I uh, went there for four years and then moved on to medical school at uh, Indiana University. I spent all four years in Indianapolis uh, and uh, had a very good time there. Uh, once I had completed medical school, I had uh, uh, decided to go on to uh, orthopedic surgery as my uh, chosen specialty. Spent five years in Kalamazoo doing a residency and then chose an extra year of training uh, to specialize in orthopedic trauma and I did that at the University of Louisville. After I graduated, um, I decided I liked the small town, the small community. Uh, I wanted a college similar to that. So I decided to go to uh, Manchester College, is now Manchester University. Um, and that's where I went for four years. I studied animal sciences at Purdue University. Um, and then when I got my major, I was actually looking towards medical school. And to do medical school, I needed to have physics and math and to work my nursing classes and everything together. I ended up getting a bachelor's in general studies and got my medical college admission test and got accepted to medical school. So when my medical school, um, I, had, I was accepted two different places and I chose to go to Des Moines University in Des Moines, Iowa. And I got my um, doctorate of osteopathic medicine there in 19... Um, in the Navy, they uh, had a program for nuclear power, so I had qualified for that and th something that I got to do also was an electrician's mate, uh, second class. Um, when I went to Purdue University, I uh, studied uh, electrical engineering, so I graduated with my Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Also then, um, as I went through my career, I realized that I liked engineering, so I went to Indiana Tech in Fort Wayne and had a master's of science degree in engineering with a minor in management. I actually ended up with a bachelor's in communications, economics, and political science. I did all that in four years because I've always uh, been kind of a nerd. Um, I received early admittance into law school. 
but I turned that down because I fell in love my senior year and chose to have her pursue her master's instead of law school. I found myself uh, in my first year at Ball State um, change, changing from a journalism major to a history major, largely because I liked the professors. They made the subject matter fascinating and made me think that's what I wanted to do for a living. Yeah, so at Purdue I uh, majored in, you know, the uh, typical uh, undergrad pre-medical, uh, you know, chemistry, biology, those kind of things. It wasn't necessarily a specific major, but, you know, Bachelor of Science and uh, uh, all the uh, pre-med uh, prerequisites uh, to get into medical school. I got a Bachelor of Arts in Finance. Uh, I knew I wanted to do something in business, but I couldn't quite decide what I wanted to focus on, and I didn't want to be a CPA, so I just, finance just kind of seemed what I settled on. And I still feel like I, I'm not done. Um, animal Sciences, I minored in uh, Agricultural Economics. Um, taking a little longer to get my bachelor's degree meant I was going to be a little older when I got out of medical school. And when I got out, I was looking for a place to be, um, to have a little bit more control. And so to not work for a hospital, but to start my own practice. So in 1998, I started Women's Health for Life in Lima, Ohio, and have been there 15 years, have two partners now, and a variety of people working for us. Um, and that's worked really well. Um, like I said, I joined the Navy. I spent uh, eight years going through the Navy, um, doing various uh, nuclear power and ended up doing submarine stuff. Um, when I was completed of that, I attended four years of college. Um, then I was able to uh, uh, secure a job with uh, Navistar, which was the parent company for International Truck or International Harvester. Um, spent 11 years there working in various research and developments on batteries and hybrid vehicles. Um, after they had decided to move to Chicago, um, I found myself employed with a defense contractor called Ultra Electronics and uh, went back and did some Navy stuff that I had done before. Uh, currently, I'm in between jobs. Uh, while Deb was getting her master's, I got a job as a sales and marketing person and I really liked it. Eventually, I landed a position 16 years ago at Biomet and I started in sports medicine, which fit me perfectly because I became uh, very knowledgeable about ACL reconstruction and rotator cuff. A lot of things that I'd uh, uh, suffered during my athletic career. Uh, eventually I grew into a position in biologics and that's where I am now. I'm currently the business director and my main task is to take technologies that are in their infancy, mature them so they're ready for the marketplace. Yeah, despite the fact that's what I wanted to do for a living, that's not what I did for a living. I went to um, I went to, uh, from, from Ball State to Indiana University to do a master's degree thinking it would lead to a PhD, but took a break after finishing the master's degree to, to uh, you know, make some money and, earn, and, and just uh, you know, take a break before thinking I'd go back to, to, to graduate school. And during that time, I uh, ended up in a job in a museum, which had frankly probably only been made possible by the fact that I'd done an internship um, as an undergraduate. And a, a job in a museum made the history degree make sense. And from there, I moved up from being a historian and a curator to being an administrator. And later, the supervisor from my internship experience, uh, ha who happened to be on the board of directors of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, recruited me to help build that museum from scratch. So most of my career then for the next 15 years was in museums after the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, knew something about building museums, but I had to learn how to do fundraising. So after learning how to do fundraising, I had the chance to, raise the, to run the capital campaign to build the new Indiana State Museum in White River State Park. And after that opened, uh, about 2004, I, I became a consultant and, and started doing nonprofit uh, uh, management and development consulting. Well, I knew uh, very early on that I wanted to go to medical school, uh, and I knew uh, quite quickly uh, in, in medical school I wanted to do orthopedics. Uh, I would tell the students that if they're considering that, that certainly you want to keep your opportunities open. It just so happened that uh, I was very much uh, knew what I wanted to do and was very focused on that. So I went in knowing I was going to do orthopedics. Um, did my residency and about my second year of residency uh, I had a mentor and now a friend who uh, 
did orthopedic trauma, had a great time on a rotation with him, really learned a lot. Uh, orthopedic trauma is kind of the nuts and bolts of orthopedics and uh, there's a lot of good that you can do. And so I kind of started directing my uh, path towards that. And uh, once I was a, a fifth year resident and was getting ready to leave for fellowship, getting close to graduation, one of the groups in town uh, comprised of uh, mentors and now friends and now partners who have uh, asked me to come back and join their group after I returned to, from fellowship and so I was happy to do that. I am currently employed at Pike Lumber Company uh, in Akron and I handle a human resource. Um, it's a position that I sort of fell into um, when after I graduated from high school, from college. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that finance degree. I thought I wanted to go into banking, but I didn't have anything lined up. So I returned to Pike and I was doing interviews with some banks and at the same time had a job offer from Pike for a full-time position with the company, uh, but not necessarily knowing what I was going to be doing. Uh, it turns out that I ended up in the human resource department. Um, just something that I think I, they saw that I was good at and just fell into it. Well, uh, I came home from Purdue and we uh, had the farm pinned down, you know, livestock and crops wise and I needed a little bit more. Uh, I wanted to jump start the farm a little bit more so I went and looked for some outside income. Uh, spent a brief stint with Maple Leaf Farms, uh, nine months uh, being a manager of their grandparent flock at Etna Green, managed four duck barns, five employees, had about 16,000 laying hens and that gave me a nice perspective on integrated agriculture and taught me a lot about biosecurity, taught me about managing employees, standard operating procedures and gave me good exposure to the corporate world. And then during that time at Maple Leaf the opportunity came to become a milk inspector with the Board of Animal Health and work for the Indiana, uh, the state of Indiana, which that gave me an insight on government regulatory and uh, gave me access to hundreds of farms. I made all kinds of friends all over the state and really helped me make plans for what I thought our dairy should be in the future. And then I went home to farm full time and that's where I've been since. I wanted to take care of women and I wanted to help women um, through their lifetime. And so part of that was taking care of women, and then as I did more and more taking care of women, that came to obstetrics, which is delivering babies, and gynecology, which is doing surgery for women. I've always had the gift to gab, and if you're a sales and marketing guy, uh, you need to be able to sell ice to an Eskimo. So I've always been influential. Uh, some people think I'm funny. Um, so I think that ability uh, also to put a technical slant on sales calls and marketing opinions. Uh, I've been able to take uh, very broad uh, technological uh, skills and boil them down so salespeople understand them. Well, I, st I stumbled into the history simply the, it, the history because I like the subject matter and, and compelling uh, educators um, made it fascinating to me. Um, I think that um, you know, again, the, the, getting a job in a museum was almost an accident. Uh, and then realizing that uh, in, in the nonprofit world, that uh, to advance and, you know, to learning how to deal with boards and deal with donors and bring additional resources to your cause, doing fundraising, um, was, was a way to uh, not only advance in my career, but to have, uh, you know, a larger impact on the on the organization's ambition, a mission, ability to fill it, fulfill its mission. Well, my uh, grandfather had an orthopedic uh, disease, really. It's called Paget's disease. It's a disease of the bone that caused his bones to break rather easily. Uh, he dealt with that uh, for uh, pretty much all the time that I can remember being around him and um, had a lot of broken bones, a lot of issues with that. And so certainly that uh, spurred an interest in orthopedics in general and kind of planted that seed. And so I just continued and carried through with that. Like I said, it just kind of fell into it. And I think maybe if when I was in college, if there had been a degree for that or more courses on that, maybe that's something I would have chosen. But I wasn't really aware of what human resource entailed, what it was. There really wasn't a degree for it when I was in school. So it, it just kind of happened. 
I take a lot of pride in being the sixth generation on my farm. And uh, I'd say my mentors growing up, um, you know, getting to farm with my grandpa, getting to farm with my dad, getting to grow up and work with the family every day. I mean, I uh, I was kind of, it was kind of in the air when I went to Purdue. I, I thought maybe I'd go into something and make a whole lot of money, you know, get that big salary. And, and after two weeks away from the farm, I knew that my heart was on the farm. And so I changed my studies more towards the farm side and, and uh, just glad to be able to raise my kids on the family farm. Um, probably doing the business part because being a doctor is difficult enough but when you go to school to be a doctor and then being a doctor is what you've been trained to do but you haven't been trained to do personnel things and be in the boardroom and run meetings that was an extra part of my job I didn't really anticipate when I started. The most challenging aspect of my career is dealing with the government. Uh, there are a lot of rules and regulations uh, from a marketing standpoint, when you work in the orthopedic industry, uh, it becomes a challenge. You wouldn't necessarily have those same obstacles or hurdles if you are a marketing person at Nike or Mercedes. Um, but it also is something that is necessary to maintain public health safety. Probably being honest with myself about what I really like doing, what I'm really good at, and what I sometimes only do because it's expected of me or because it um, might be may, the best thing on, on a resume. I've, I've reached a point in my career where I'm trying to do more of what I like doing um, and not necessarily the things, you know, man, managing people, achieving consensus, asking people for money can be, can be very hard and some, you know, sometimes doing Doing what looks best on a resume isn't necessarily as important as being able to, uh, to get to sleep at night. Uh, the challenging part uh, from a professional standpoint is that orthopedic trauma is uh, very uh, hit or miss. One day it can be very busy, one day it can be nothing. Uh, one day it could be complex, one day it could be fairly straightforward. Um, and so each day is very different. It's, it's not only a challenge, but it also makes it kind of exciting. And so uh, there is uh, the challenge of trying to uh, figure out people's injuries and how to best uh, put them back together again and help them get back to a meaningful life. Uh, from a personal standpoint, the trade-off of that is that there is some time away from family that I wish wasn't uh, all the time there, but uh, uh, we've figured out a system that so far has done pretty well. Well, currently with the Affordable Care Act, um, there are a lot of laws that are coming into place that just are really affecting all the health insurance plans and that's one of my main uh, jobs is to keep uh, our plan compliance with all the changing laws and staying up to date and that's difficult to do when the government itself doesn't know what they want to do so that's been very challenging. Well we have challenges, numerous challenges, none that are you know all that bad. Uh, nature sometimes throws us a curveball you know, last year's drought uh, was really hard on the animals and, and we're seeing some of the effects still this year. And then, you know, as the farm grows, uh, we, we have to seek some outside uh, family and outside the family employment. And that can sometimes create some challenges where we're blessed with a very excellent staff right now. And uh, but as we grow, we're going to have to bring on more people. And I want to make sure they're people that I feel good about having around my kids and and uh, we're going to stay local and, and keep good people around. But uh, other than that, it's just a, a life of leisure and luxury on the dairy farm. Uh, my husband and I, Doug Stahl, we have uh, five children. And along with those five children, they have various activities, soccer, um, band, cross country, and 4-H. And so we've been very involved in our 4-H program using the skills that I learned as I was a child uh, doing animals. So we have goats and chickens uh, this year and dogs at the fair besides other 4-H projects they've taken. Uh, really enjoyed playing cards, uh, play euchre and some other games. Uh, uh, played a lot of chess with my kids and other people. 
Um, and of course there was Boy Scout activities for uh, camping and so forth. Allie, Greg, and I play a lot of volleyball, uh, basketball with Allie, uh, basketball and golf with Greg, and uh, other than that, we do not have a lot of time. It seems that they're constantly in some type of youth sports. Uh, we have a lot of homework at night that we enjoy. Uh, my wife's not very good at sixth grade homework, so that seems to be my task right now. Professional obligations. I like to travel when I can, visit uh, mostly um, uh, you know, uh, other cities in America. I've been to Scotland twice, uh, ancestral homeland. Um, I like to cook. My wife and I both like to cook and um, recently are starting to, you know, to garden ourselves also as we start to learn a little bit about vegan cooking. Not that we're going to go on a 100% vegan diet, but uh, there are some health advantages involved there. And it's remarkable to somebody who ate meat three times a day for the first 50 years of his life that uh, there's some really good meals out there that don't involve it. Well, with uh, two kids, uh, one at uh, seven and a half and one that's nearly four, they keep us busy with uh, their activities. My son's played uh, multiple sports, so we enjoy doing that. I helped coach uh, the baseball team, and then we've taken him to other things. Um, and uh, we're involved in our church, and we do uh, lots of activities with church friends. Um, I love movies. I got to put in a home theater in my uh, house, so I've uh, gotten that to put together. and. I really enjoy watching movies and watching sports and stuff like that. Um, and I got to take my son to three Cubs games this year, so we had a great time doing that. Um, soccer is big at our house. My husband plays soccer, and now he's, you know, has started with our boys playing soccer. And just, I feel like our, it's evolving. You're, you go through different stages in your life, and I think right now our focus is on our children and the activities that they're involved in. You know, when I was younger, I was involved in a lot of different community uh, events and stuff, but as I started my own family, the focus is more on the stuff that they're doing, whether it's school-related or whatever it may be. Well, I've got three children, a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old daughter, and a two-year-old son. And uh, my wife and I, we like to spend time with them. Um, they're uh, my oldest son. I probably spend the most time with him because he, he can get out there and, and with me and work and uh, we like to, he really likes to catch frogs and we like to go fishing and we got a little side-by-side four-wheeler thing that we uh, like to drive around shoot critters and mostly groundhogs and birds and, and uh, we just like the outdoors. My family loves to go to, we've tried to go to all the state parks with hotels and uh, hit all the trails. And, by the time I carry the baby on my back and hit them trails, I need a vacation for my vacation when we get back home, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm a member of the American Legion, so there's a lot of things we do for the veterans that are coming back from the different uh, um, service that they're doing. Um, I'm also a member of a local church, so there's a lot of activities that we do there. Um, and then there's activities like this that I volunteer for. So. Uh, my dad suffered and passed away due to Parkinson's disease, so I'm active in the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Uh, their task is to get research monies uh, to fight that disease, and not just to cure the disease, but also to uh, lessen some of the symptoms. I'm also heavily active in the First Tee organization, which is based on golf. Uh, what they're able to do is to take urban kids, teach them about golf, but get them in contact with a mentor so they can learn about education, physical activity, and golf is more of a vehicle than the end goal. Well, I've always done a lot of volunteering as part, uh, part of my uh, consulting practice. It's a great way um, to network and meet people and search for, you know, and find, find new clients. In the last few years, I've found that I'm doing less volunteering that might lead to work and more volunteering uh, through my church, at Trinity Episcopal Church in Indianapolis, uh, doing things uh, that are probably never going to lead to work, but um, you know, work, working in you know, food pantries, pantries and um, Habitat for Humanity's building projects and and uh, just you know, doing the things 
uh, in the community that are um, helping others less fortunate and, and making me uh, you know, feel like I'm having an opportunity really to give back. Uh, well, as um, part of uh, being um, the position that I have uh, as an orthopedic surgeon in Kalamazoo, uh, we, I am employed by the hospital that I, that I work at, um, but we do uh, perform volunteer faculty activities with the residents. So I'm a part of resident training as well as medical student training. And in fact, uh, our center used to be called the Kalamazoo Center for Medical Studies, and it's going to transition over to the Western Michigan University I think it's Center of Medical Education. Uh, so Western Michigan there in Kalamazoo is starting their own medical school, which will be starting uh, first class next year. And uh, so uh, there's opportunities to be volunteer faculty for that as well. And so I certainly enjoy having the residents uh, in uh, the cases with me and in clinics with me and things like that. Well, I have always been involved in the community with a lot of the translating because being bilingual and there being a big, a big Hispanic population in Akron, um, I've always been called on for uh, translating at different uh, places at the school, in town, the banks, wherever it's needed. So I've kind of always been on call for that kind of stuff. Um, I have been a member of the Akron Relations Task Force, currently a member of the School Improvement Steering Committee. Um, I just came off the board for the Beaver Dam Preschool, uh, which my, both of my boys attended. Uh, and I'm looking right now, I'm looking forward to going into the Akron Parent Support Group. So it's just, it's changing, but I like being active in the community. I just have to say that um, being involved with the Beaver Dam Community Corporation is one of my favorites. Uh, there, you, you know, when the Tippecanoe Valley Consolidated, they brought in Beaver Dam and where the old school used to stand before it burnt down, they set up a memorial park and you know, I just live very close to there, and my great grandfather was principal there, and I got to the opportunity to be secretary treasurer, and things were getting a little rough around the edges, and I uh, had connections with local government. I got some monies around in our group. We worked together and we fixed up the park and and made it in real good shape, so those who used to go to school there, the alumni, can enjoy that, and and I've gotten a lot of nice compliments from that. That's been very rewarding. I've I've served on the Beaver Dam uh, preschool board there with my church and try to help with that. Um, I uh, serve with, uh, I'm president of the Fulton County Dairy Herd Improvement Association and try to facilitate uh, things with dairymen in Fulton County. My uh, favorite service is agriculture advocacy uh, through Farm Bureau and I serve on county, on the county board. I serve in uh, I'm chairman of the Indiana State Dairy Advisory Committee, and then I get to represent Indiana on the national scene with the American Farm Bureau Federation, and that, that's just been totally enjoyable. Um, my family, I think. Uh, my children are probably my biggest sense of pride, although n your children are never perfect, but they do work really hard and when they apply themselves, they do very well. Um, the other part that I really like about my job is volunteering and helping uh, the pregnancy center in Lima called Heartbeat of Lima, and they counsel women against abortions. And so I've been helping there, and that is actually better than my job that I do on a daily basis. Uh, professionally, the, the biggest thing that I'm proud of is uh, my ability or my participation in, in several patents that I worked on. Um, at the time when the patents were created, they were uh, a new, never thought of kind of technology that uh, is kind of taken for granted today. So uh, I was happy to be part of that. I think what I'm most proud of is my relationship with my family. Uh, we're very weird. We all live on the same road. Uh, some of the locals call it Miller Road. Um, but I think as everybody grows and you have different career paths and different challenges and as kids become the main focus of your life, uh, some families unfortunately aren't able to stay that close and we're just crazy enough to do it. Well, I, the, the fact that there are two museums out there with my name on the cornerstone, I can't deny that that's, that, that, that that's something that I, you know, are highlights of my, my career. But honestly, this summer I had an experience that I never would have thought was even on my short list. And that was that my 
27 and 25 year old daughters who are both grown and independent and in, in, leading interesting lives and completely on their own, both of their own accord, scheduled time to do a family vacation with my, you know, with, with uh, my wife and their younger brother again. Uh, a a week-long family vacation with the five of us was something that I probably thought was never going to happen again. And the fact that they chose to do that is one of those things on a bucket list that I, that's probably number one now that I didn't even realize how much, you know, how much it was going to mean to me. Well, I think uh, the fact that uh, Kelly and I were able to survive this whole long ordeal and uh, start, a, start a family and, you know, we're well into raising them at this point and we've done... Uh, I think we've been really successful at uh, keeping it together <laughs> through all this uh, time frame of, uh, of getting to the point where I'm actually now working. So, uh, you know, all these other distinguished uh, alumni have uh, been in their various fields for a while, and I've uh, only had a real job, as she likes to say, for a year. And so um, it's, uh, it's a great sense of pride to have accomplished that and, and to, uh, kept our family uh, as number one obtaining a Bachelor of Arts in Finance, getting a college degree because that was very important to my parents. I didn't think that college was going to be an option for me, so being able to get that was is definitely that and um, family. My biggest sense of pride is that uh, my kids are going to have the opportunity to farm. You know, uh, I see in my lifetime I've seen a lot of farms leave the countryside. And I don't think that's been very good for our rural communities. And, uh, you know, as I work hard to make sure that my children and my brother's children have a spot to thrive and do well, I also want to make sure that they have a good rural community uh, to raise their kids in and raise the eighth generation. And I'd like to, you know, as I work with local government and state government, I want to try to find solutions to maybe turn things around a little bit. I think how to study, how to learn, and how to work with other people, um, but to do a variety of things. Because when I was here, I did band and choir and drama and went to computer classes here and learned lots of things. And so to be well-rounded, I think, as a student was the best thing that I learned here. Um, I, I, the biggest thing I got from being at Tippecanoe Valley was a lot of the fundamentals. Um, when I got into doing research and development, I realized that a lot of things that I had learned in high school and in college were the basis of trying to create new things. So it's always good to have that foundation. Um, one of the gentlemen asked me earlier, could it be as simple as algebra? And it is. I mean, if you can basically add numbers together, that's the foundation for being able to do anything else that you can dream of. Yeah, I think the, the one thing at Valley uh, that stands out for me really isn't any curriculum based activities. Uh, the one aspect for me is uh, cross-pollination. I had friends on the football team, uh, the chess club, band, all of the classic stereotypical niches that you see at high school. Uh, and my ability to find friends and commonalities with all those groups, uh, that served me well in everything I've done because uh, in high school, you can choose your friends, but later on in life, you can never choose your coworkers. And so, to be able to find uh, something that you both enjoy, uh, that always helps. Well, the big, and I think I've heard other people say the same thing today, so I think we're all on the, on, on the same page. The big thing for me was the great opportunity to be involved in so many different things. Um, my wife also attended. Um, North Central High School in Indianapolis with a class of 1300 where there were where you were only allowed to participate in one extracurricular activity choose one you know the opportunity that you have here at a school this size uh, to, to, to participate in a wide range of extracurricular activities and, and even you know part of my experience was uh, uh, the jobs paid and unpaid that I had um, you know, not, not only working in, in the family business, but writing for the Akron Minto News and uh, helping broadcast uh, games on WRSW. Um, you know, the, the opportunity to do things outside the classroom uh, were, and I understand continue to be, you know, you know great assets that for people in smaller communities, you may, not you, you may not appreciate at the time, 
you know, that, that the opportunity to do a lot of different things may not be there in larger communities. That if you work hard, you can do anything. I think the best thing I learned in high school is how to be a friend. And, uh, you know, you can't have enough friends. And I suppose, uh, you know, just the, the sense of community and, and just everything that came with that, I just really enjoyed my time here at TVHS. Don't underestimate yourself. I think many of the kids here can't see outside of the walls and what there is to do. And a lot of them think that they should know right now what they want to do, which is not reasonable. Um, to start on a career path and to change multiple times as you're deciding on your career is more the norm than deciding and knowing right now. So to keep those paths open, go to college, get educated, and then making your final decision. By the time you're 50, you should probably know what you want to do with your life. Um, I found that uh, learning doesn't end when you're done with school. You're, you're going to be a lifetime learner, whether you're actually in a formal setting or whether you're just learning from other employees. Um, if things change, technologies change, you'll always be continuously learning. So hopefully that's something that people can continue to learn. Uh, my wife disagrees with this. Uh, but my piece of advice is you should be exceptional in everything you do. Uh, it's very rare when I interview somebody who's exceptional at one thing and then just average at everything else. Um, in my life, I was a good student. I think I'm a good worker. Hopefully, I'm a good dad. But on actual skill sets, I think if you're able to be exceptional, it's because you have work ethic, you're a problem solver, you're dedicated, and you're willing to show up. Uh, so don't sell yourself short. Um, I would tell them that they can be exceptional in everything they choose to do. Well, and that following that that would that is, uh, along with understanding that if if you're interested in college, um, that uh, the finan there are financial aid packages out there for um, you know for the private schools and explore everything. Um, and if you're not interested in college. Um, take, uh, take some classes along the way. If, you, if what you want to do is work with your hands, great, but think about it in terms of, of, of working with your hands in a way that you may someday own your own business. Um, I mean, I, I think that, that you know, having a, exploring every option and keep, you know, keeping options open is, is one. And then uh, back to the extracurricular activities. Let a friend talk you into something that's outside your comfort zone. Try something that's maybe, you know, you know something that maybe you didn't, you didn't think you were going to try, but, you know, you've got the opportunity now. You may not in the future have the chance to do the full range of, of life's experiences like you do now. Well, I would tell them that uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that you have here, I've just been amazed and impressed at just the changes in the 15 years since uh, we graduated, that uh, the amount of... Um, changes that have taken place I think that are all for the better with the, the uh, opportunities, the technology, the, um, the things that are in the different science rooms. Of course that's where I spent a lot of my time getting ready for uh, uh, going to college and I think the opportunities are here. Uh, I do joke sometimes that hey I went to a small school in the middle of a cornfield um, but that doesn't matter. They're all here. It's, it's, everything's here for you. It's laid out in front of you and you can take advantage of it and take it wherever you want. Education is key. Um, even if you don't think you want to go to college, even if you don't think that you want to go to a f and get a four-year degree, there is something out there that you can do, whether it's a two-year degree or, you know, classes for something or a seminar, uh, whatever it may be, because it's, once you enter the workforce, it's getting harder to find a job without any sort of education. Um, so education, and like I said, work hard because at the end of the day, if you, whatever you did, as long as you worked, you gave it your best, uh, whatever the outcome, if you gave it your best, you should feel proud of that. And it's a big world out there, so don't be afraid to try new things and to explore the world and see what it has to offer. Well, I'd say that uh, you just can't get enough exposure. You know, you need to get out there if you're interested in something, immerse yourself in it and make sure it's what you really, really want to do and uh, try to rub shoulders with good people. And as you choose your friends in school or as you choose your friends as you move on, try to surround yourself with the best people as possible. And when you go into a situation, 
you know, go in prepared and don't be intimidated because, you know, just because you came from a small school in the countryside doesn't mean that you can't go out there and make some positive changes and be a real factor. I just encourage students to get engaged and get in exposure.